Okay, we're going to try something different now. I'm going to go over problem 29 in a video for you all. Let's see if this works. Okay, so problem 29 from Hurstein. The problem says, uh oh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so the problem says if G is a group and A and B are in G, such that A, B, A inverses B to the I for some integer I, then A to the R, B, A, negative R, B, I, B, R, where R is a positive integer. That is what the problem says on page 29. They say where R is a positive integer, but a better way of saying that would be R is a natural number, which is a big, big hint that induction is the way to go. Before we do this one, though, it's going to take two inductions because we need a little lemma first. Uh, so here's our lemma. I see that the lemma is maybe not visible. The top says a lemma. First, we prove that for this hypothesis, we have a b to the n, a inverse b i to the n. So notice what I've done here is in the original theorem, we're talking about a r b a negative r, and here this is just one a. If the thing that has changed is the thing in the middle, it could be any power. So a b to any power, a to the negative one, is b i times that any power. So for any natural numbers by induction. So when n equals one, that would be a b to the first, a inverse b to the i. In other words, that's exactly this hypothesis of our theorem. So we definitely know that's true. That is literally the only thing we know is true, really. So next, move on to the inductive hypothesis. We assume it is true when uh, for n, so a b to the n a inverse is b i to the n. Notice that is what we're trying to prove and show the same thing except replace n with n plus one. So let's start by focusing on the show. We have our show, we don't assume our show, we just start with the left side, a, b to the n plus one, a inverse. Then we do a normal trick, we change b to the n plus one into b to the n and b. And then we do another standard trick, we throw in a inverse a in the middle of that. Of course, that is e, so that is legitimate, I can throw that in the middle. The reason I'm doing that is now I get to use my inductive hypothesis. Notice my inductive hypothesis is about a times b to the n a inverse, and that is what I have in my first three. I put them in parentheses so you can see them. The first three are inductive hypothesis, and the second three is the hypothesis of the original theorem. So we know the first three, a b to the n a inverse, is b i times n, b to the i times n. Notice that is what's at the top of the screen here. That is the thing we're trying to prove. That is our inductive hypothesis, and a times b a inverse, that is b to the i. Again, that is the hypothesis of the original problem, which we are assuming here. So the first three give us b i to the n, the second give us b to, I to, the, b to the i, and we add our exponents, and we get the result. We want exactly that as our show. Look at the fourth bullet. You can see that is precisely what we're trying to show. So that is the proof of the lemma. And now we can return to the original problem. The original problem, again, says we have a, b, a inverse, and we b to the i is given, I just used that a moment ago, and we want to show that it works if it's a r b to the negative r, that's going to give you b to i to the r. Notice that is a little bit different. It's not times, it's to the r. So we're going to induct again. We're going to let r be the letter we induct. I'm going to change the letter to n just to make it more comfortable for you. So where you see an r there, I'm going to use n's in the proof. So first we prove the theorem for r equals 1. Uh, but again, same as before, if you look at r equals 1 in what we're trying to show, that's a to the first times b a to the negative 1 equals b i to the first, which is literally the assumption. So again, nothing to do in the first case. Now, if we move on, we're going to assume is true for r equals n, and we're going to show for r equals n plus 1. So again, here's our assumption, our theorem, a to the n, b a to the negative n is b i to the n. And we're going to show same thing, but replace n with n plus 1. So same thing, focusing on our show, we're going to look at a to the n plus 1 times b. Notice not b to a power, just b, a to the negative n plus 1. Same trick as before, break a to the n plus 1 up into two pieces. But this time, put the a to the n on the inside, because that is going to match our inductive hypothesis. So. I've got the inductive hypothesis ready to go, so I know that a to the n, b, a to the negative n is b to the i to the n, and so we can move on. So if you look at our top line, we've replaced a to the n, b, a to the negative n with b, i to the n, and so we have a times b 
to i to the n times a to the negative one, which is why we needed to prove the lemma. We needed to prove the lemma because now we have the a on the left and the a on the right, but the thing inside is not b. The thing inside is b to some crazy power. Now I proved by induction that uh, for b to any power, we have this nice rule where you take b to that power and multiply by i. i to the n is just a number, so we get to use the lemma. And in particular, we know that a b i to the n, a inverse is b i to the n times i, right? That's what happens. That's what the lemma said you multiply by i, which is b i to the n plus one. And notice that proves our theorem. That is exactly what we wanted to show. We wanted to show that a n plus one b a to the negative n plus one, that's the top of this slide, is equal to b to the i n plus one. Let's even slide back so you can see that that is indeed our show. On the fourth bullet here, that is we assume this and we want to show that exactly what we have shown. And that's it. Let's see if this works for you. Are you happy? And I will find out if this recording worked. See y'all.